Hi there, tech adventurers! Anna here, your guide through the enchanting maze of Linux files. In this video, we are starting a part 2 of our two-part series. We will take the theory we covered earlier and turn it into a hands-on C++ magic. If you're ready to get your hands dirty with some code and discover what really goes under the hood, then grab your favorite beverage, settle in, and let's get started! So, before we even open the file, we might want to create two strings to write to our files. Let's start with that. We can send a message saying hello blue file and also hello pink file. Files also have feelings so we want to be really polite to them, okay? We're using a constant chart pointer because it's one of the parameters for the right system call. So we can just use a string or something else unless you want to start the C++ revolution. <laughs> Now, we need to first open the file and assign different permissions to it using different flags for reading and writing. Okay, so when we open a pink file, we can say that we are returning fdpink. The open function takes several parameters. First, okay, so first is the path to the file in the form of a string. And since we want our files in the same folder, we we'll just put pink.txt and then we need to add some flags with permissions. We want our pink file to be open for reading and writing, okay? So we say that if the file already exists and we want to give it a read and write permission, we use this flag. But then if it doesn't exist, we want to create it and give it read and write permissions like that, okay? Let's just copy all that and change it to work for our blue file, all right? Okay, so let's copy, ba -ba 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 -ba. Uh, Okay, first let's change the name for our file descriptor and let's change the name also for the file path because we're referring to the blue file, right? And we also want to change the permission and give it only a write permission. Okay. Then we want to do some error checking. We can do it by checking the value of the file descriptor. Let's do it for both files, all in one statement so we can save some real estate in our program. If the file descriptor is minus one, we want to print an error statement saying that there was an error open in the file and we can also return one. All right, okay, let's do that. Uh -huh. Okay, let's say, okay. Now we are ready to write to our files. And we can use the write system call for that. The write system call returns the number of bytes written to the file. So we can later print and check the value. The write function takes several parameters. First, um, it takes a file descriptor. Okay, we have it right here. Then we need to pass our message. And the last parameter, we need to indicate the length of the message, okay? All right, so let's repeat the same for our blue file. And all we need to do is just locate, so let's copy it. And we need to change the name, the name of the return value, then the name of the string, let's change that. And we also have this name right here, okay. All right, I think we changed everything we need to. All right, so now we need to add some error checking for bytes written. Uh, but I really want to skip this part. Well, we don't really expect any errors here, so let's just be a little bit lazy and skip this error checking part for now and just bring the bytes written for both of the files. 
but promise me that when you write your code you always check for errors unless you enjoy some surprises we'll just bring here okay successfully go to the pink file and add the number of the bytes so we can see how many bytes we wrote okay now we just need to copy and then adapt it for a blue file okay copying and paste is basically a coding skill on its own you can get pretty far with it so all right So we wrote to the blue file and the number of bytes blue to print. Okay, perfect. All right, so now we can read from the file. And let's start with the pink file first because we know we can read from it. Remember, we gave it the read and write permission. So uh, let's do that one first. Uh, let's declare buffer first and we can use a read system call to read from the file. So it's similar to the write function, right? The first parameter takes a file descriptor. Then we are passing our buffer to where we are going to be reading. And then the size that we want to read. Okay, let's read the entire buffer. Okay, like that. Okay, and now we are ready to print. Okay, so let's print out our buffer content and then and then we can just close both of the files. Okay. One and then another one. Put the file descriptor in there. Okay. Um okay. Now we just ready to compile and run our program. Okay, we just type to compile it to plus plus and then we need to put a name cpp and then o and the output file whatever we want to name it and now let's just run it okay just like that okay okay so check this out the text that we wrote is not there what do you think is going on oh i think i know we are reading from the pink txt file right after writing to it. So the issue here is that the file pointer is still at the end of the file after the write operation. So when we try to read, it's starting from the end, resulting in no data being read. To fix this, we need to reset the file pointer to the beginning of the file before reading. This can be done using the LC function. Let's try using LC, okay? LC takes several parameters. So the first parameter is just the file descriptor. As you can see, we use the file descriptor a lot. We need to use fdpint here. Then the second parameter is an integer offset and we want to use zero for the offset, right? Because we want to start from the beginning of the file. And then the last parameter is the offset type. For example, um, we can use seek set, and then we will be applying the offset to the beginning of the file. And that's exactly what we want. Okay, so let's say now we want to read from our blue file, right? But we set permissions to read only. Uh, let's check that. Okay. We can list the permissions here. Like that. The permissions correspond to the permissions we gave to our files here. Pink is for reading and writing and the blue is for writing only. But aren't you curious now, what will happen if we try to read from our blue file? Do you want to try? Let's make sure first that we use the lsync function as we did for our pink file because we don't want to mess up two times, okay? All right, so again, we just need to copy all these lines here and then we can change pink for blue. Okay, easy peasy. Do, 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 do. 
And now let's just compile and run it again. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This doesn't look like a little blue file to me. What is this? A chupacabra? Those permissions are not a joke. Oh, wait. Silly me. I know what the problem is. I think we need to go back now and add some error checking that we skipped on. Lesson learned. Always add error checking statements to avoid chupacabra output unless you enjoy debugging mysteries of a course. And we don't, right? Okay, we just need to add here if by its red blue equal equal minus one and we give a, an error pair and say arrow reading from the blue file, okay? Or else we can display the message. Okay, like this. Let's compile and run our code again. Uh huh. Wow, wow, wow. Permissions denied. What? Uh, what if we absolutely have to see what's inside of the file? What can we do without going back and changing our original permissions? Um, there seems to be hidden a lot of roadblocks here. Well, we can close the file first and then reopen it with different permissions. You want to try that? How do you like this idea? Let's see. Okay. We think we are so clever, so we'll just close the file like this, and then we will reopen it and give it a read only permission. Okay, let's see what happens. Let's run it. Mm -hmm. No way. <laughs> No way, it turns out our cleverness doesn't always pays off. Still permission denied. So what do we need to do? Do you have any ideas? Do we really have to go back and rewrite our code? Oh, I have another idea. Do you know that T mode, change mode command, we often use in the terminal to change the permissions? Well, guess what? We can also use it here because why not? We can try, right? Okay, so let's just use the chi mode. Okay, like this. So we put the path of the blue file and now let's steal the flags from our pink file and we can use them here. All right, all done. The drum roll, please. <laughs> oh, look at that. It worked. And now we know how to create files, how to open them, and also how to change permissions, as well as how to read and write to them. All we have left to try is maybe appending to one of our files. How do you think we can do it? Let's think of the steps together. Remember how we initially wrote to the file and the first what we did was we declared a string that we wanted to write and then we used the write system call. So is it enough to append to the file? Let's try. So let's not reinvent the wheel and copy what we were writing to the blue file. We also need to write the string we want to append. Okay, so we just say text to the right blue new and we can say I am appending to the blue file. Okay, now we just need to add new to our write function. So we will be writing to the correct string. Okay, ready, let's run it. Where did our first message go? Seems like something went wrong again. Do you know what? Do you know what happened? I think we forgot our friend lseek function. 
So the reason why we can't see it is that we wrote over it starting from the beginning by it. And what we really wanted was to start from the end of the first message. All we need to do is to start writing at the correct offset. Remember that we wrote 16 bytes when we sent our first message. So let's use that as our new offset and see. Let's see what happens. Okay, we just need to use the LSEQ. LSEQ and LSEQ repetition is good for us. We just take the file descriptor, then we need to put um, 16 as an offset and we use a six set to start from the beginning. Let's run it really quick. Okay, this should definitely work. Hey, and there you have it. It did work. I was right. We did it. Yay! Time to celebrate. And there you have it, Tech Explorers. We've navigated through the code. We tangled with the file permissions, and we even had a face off with that mysterious chupacabra output. From creating the files to sneaking peeks at what's inside, we've pretty much covered it all. But wait, there is always more fun to be had. For a little challenge for you, try following along with the steps we covered and see if you can not only write, read, and append to the file, but maybe you can even try deleting or renaming it. Yeah, there are more things that could be done. Were you able to uncover any surprises or run into any weird behavior? Drop your findings in the comments below. I'm dying to know what you uncovered. Thanks for joining me on the stack tastic journey. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more coding adventures. Leave a comment below and let me know what part of the video you found most surprising or helpful. I'd love to hear your thoughts and remember. The world of files is as magical as you make it. Until the next time, keep exploring, stay curious, and may your coding always be bug-free. Bye!